you finally started working on one of your first real commercial games. And because it's a commercial game, you need to have a price for it, or at least some monetization system. In this video, I wanna talk a bit more about what are the things that we went through and that some other developers have gone through in figuring out what is a good way to price your game. Because of course you don't wanna just pull out the number and then suddenly it's like way too high, which causes nobody to wanna buy your game because they don't think it's worth it. But you also don't wanna go too cheap because then, hey, if your game is really popular, you're probably going to be missing out on a lot of revenue because you've priced it lower than it actually is worth it and you can't just raise prices once you've decided it. So I wanna talk a bit more about, okay, how do you determine those prices? now? Before I actually go into the whole strategy behind it, I do want to say this video is aimed at PC games. I'm not going to keep it mobile. Mobile is a completely different market. This is mainly from our personal experience as well. So if you're making a Steam game and it's going to be a one-time purchase one, so not something like a free-to-play with in-app purchases or cosmetics, then this is the video for you. Now, generally there are two bounds that I want to start with. I don't think you should even think about pricing your game less than two to three dollars. And I don't think you should like attempt going for more than $20. Why exactly those numbers? Well, if you go below $2, basically, that means that you can't really discount that much anymore because there is a minimum on Steam of 99 cents. And if you go below that minimum, you can't easily discount anymore. Steam also recently made some policy changes for regionalized prices where you can't go under like a converted ratio. We'll dive into that in a second as well. But basically that means that Steam is kind of sick of the 99 cent games and you should be too because you are barely earning anything from them. At that point, just go for like free to play. So go for at least $2 if you're making like a half an hour really short game. But even then I would still go a bit higher. We'll get to that in a second, but don't go below $2. As for the upper limit, $20, that's usually where your players or like people browsing Steam draw the line of, okay, what are the expectations I have? Forge Industry at $17, so we are already like kind of teetering that line of near 20 and we've already got kind of a bit of backlash of like, this game is not worth it. Once you have a game that's $20, there are very high expectations in terms of how are the visuals, how is the gameplay, and just the amount of time and content that a player expects to get out of a game that you, honestly, probably will not be able to reach. If you do feel like, okay, I have a game that's like 100 hours of actual gameplay, which maybe there's a few of you out there that are watching these videos, but not the majority, then consider going a bit higher, but generally don't go for over 20 because then you're going way over the, the impulse buy and people need to be really into your game already. You need to have really good sales pages, really good conversion, probably like have good reviews to back up that price as well. So. I wouldn't go higher than that. Now, between $2 and $20, there's still a very wide range, so let's try and narrow it down a bit further. What really determines your game's price? One of the most common ones that you as the developer probably think about is, how long can I play my game? The longer you can play the game, the more the game is worth it. And Generally, that is pretty solid. It's really hard to charge $15 for a two hour game, for example. Whereas if it's a 10 hour game, well, then that's a pretty good deal. Now, keep in mind, if you go for that approach that gamers are incredibly, incredibly demanding. So whilst they would gladly pay $15 at least for going to a movie for two hours, if they pay $15 and they only get 10 hours of gameplay, they already kind of feel like they got cheated on. So it is gonna to be tough to pick a price that everyone is gonna be happy with and willing to pay, keep that in mind, but length is a pretty good indication. Some other things that can really like give you more stat changes basically to how much you can charge for your game is visuals. You can have a game that has horrible gameplay mechanics, that has really just nothing unique except a solid, really good art style that is like very distinctive and you can still charge $15 for it. The moment you go over the $15 mark, basically your game needs to be really visual already. One of the pieces of feedback we got with Forge Industry is mechanically, it's really solid. But just because people don't really like the art style, they don't want to spend that much money on it because generally, we buy with our eyes. We don't actually read the description and the mechanics and things like that before we buy it, no. We just look at how does this game look? Does it look like it's worth whatever price it is? So that's why also if you have an artist in your team and you can get some really good screenshots, some really good key art, people will already be 
much more happy to pay more for the game purely from like the psychological perspective of hey the art looks good so let's assume the game is good as well and then some other things to keep in mind is how long are you developing the game because of course if you're making a game and it's finished in like two months okay probably there will be less content in it and less playtime. but also you don't need to earn as much to recoup the costs whereas if you work on the game for four years then you'll need to sell a lot more copies and those copies should probably be priced higher as well in order to offset basically those four years of development. That's why I always suggest you stick to shorter development goals because you can get a little bit of a lower price and still be able to recover your costs of actually making the game. And also look at who's your target audience. If you're aiming at kids, probably your upper limit is gonna be more like $10. If you're aiming more at like what we were doing, older people, which are like 18 to 25 plus even, they usually have a bit of income. And that means that you can charge a bit more for a game and they'll be able to pay for that. Whereas, you know, if your target audience is like the kid who has to do chores in the house just so he can get $10 to get her to buy some V-Bucks, well, he's never gonna buy your random indie game that's priced at $20 because it's probably not gonna be worth it for like how much time they need to put into earning that money to buy the game in the first place. Now, what you need to keep in mind as well is what you're putting as the price on Steam is nowhere near what you're going to actually be getting at the end of the day as a developer. This is already assuming you don't have a publisher that you're like dealing with revenue shares. I'm just talking about the net pay that Steam will give you basically at the end of each month is probably in my experience gonna be about 50% of the actual gross revenue that you have. Because you need to keep in mind, Steam takes 30% right out of the bat. So that's already a lot of money gone. Small interject, yeah, sure, you can go to Epic Game Store and get 12%, but you don't have the same reach as on Steam. And it's also not as fair and democratized because they don't have a similar wishlist system. So I wouldn't go for anything else than Steam, even though Gaben is sitting on a huge pile of money from that 30%. It is still the best platform, unfortunately, and I don't see it changing anytime soon. You're probably also not gonna reach like the $10 million that you need to reach before Steam drops it down to 25% or something. So 30%, assume that. Then keep in mind, you need to pay taxes. In Belgium, that's another 21% of whatever we earn from our game, we have to give away as well. Steam does this for you, so that's easy, but that means that you're not seeing that money. Also then keep in mind, there's gonna be things like refunds, which are generally between 10 and 20%, depending on like how people like your game, which will also eat into, okay, this is the amount of sales I have versus this is what Steam will pay me out. You'll be doing sales as well, which also cut down like the price, because of course, if your game is discounted 50%, well, Steam is still gonna take 30% of whatever 50%, and then again, the taxes, the refunds, all of that. And lastly, you also have regionalized pricing, which means that in a lot of countries, especially if you're from like one of the more Western countries like the United States or from Germany, there will be a lot of regions such as Southeast Asia or South America, where your game will actually be selling permanently with like a 50% discount almost. We'll dive into that in a second. But with all of those things combined, if we look at like the amount of copies we sold versus the net gain we have for Forge Industry, it's about 50% of our actual like sale price. So keep those things in mind because often I see developers just get hung up in, okay, the game is gonna be $15, we're gonna sell 10,000 copies and our development is gonna be funded by that but they don't keep in mind that they are actually gonna lose half of that. Now, one more thing that I wanna get into as well is, this is gonna be hard, but try not to participate in the race to the bottom. There's a very unique thing going on right now with game development where we're one of the only indie scenes where indie actually means you're worth less. If you go and look at like music, for example, or indie movies, generally people are happy to pay more for it because it's like more handcrafted, more personal. That's not the case with indies. We are just like, let's go down, 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 which is why Steam also implemented that change of you can't go below 99 cents regionalized even because there are just too many games and everyone is trying to undercut everyone because the issue is a lot of your competition just wants to make games basically for free. That's your competition. So it can be very tempting to be like, oh, but Vampire Survivors is only 
five dollars so my game isn't as good as vampire survivors so i can't charge ten dollars for it we had this with forge industry as well and honestly all i can say here is know the value of your game and just stick to it don't get caught up in the numbers because objectively there is no way that forge industry at 17 dollars can compete with the witcher at 10 dollars or whatever it is at like during a steam sale there's no competing and you shouldn't even try you should just stick to your price and stick to it and don't panic and don't be like, oh no, this is too overpriced. We got a lot of comments that Forge Industry was overpriced, but there's actually a development on that that is quite funny. And it is that Chris Zukowski, who generally you guys seem to admire, like almost cult-like sometimes, which worries me, he actually agrees with our pricing of like 16, 17 dollars because it's still worth it. And we're not participating in just devaluing all other games. There's like a graph, I'll see if I can find it, that the average price of a game on Steam has just been going down and down over the past few years. And that means you'd have to sell more copies just to earn the same. And don't do that basically. Just know your worth and stick to it. And once you have decided on, okay, my game is gonna be $10 or well, technically $9.99, don't use whole numbers on Steam, like everyone uses the 99 cents, even though it can seem a bit scummy, but it just works psychologically. So stick to the rounded down with by one cent numbers is now you're gonna have to regionalize your game. Don't make the mistake that we did. I just went through like the entire list and I was like, okay, let's just assume the economic situation in Uruguay and then convert the currency and I'll use it that. But you can't know the situation in like all of the different countries. Like I don't know how the Canadian economy is doing. Yet I still just pull the number like 25 Canadian dollars out of thin air, where in reality our game was way less worth it in Canadian dollars than 25 because I didn't do enough research. And I don't think you need to overthink regionalizing pricing. Just go with a number and then find a very popular game, like super popular, that has like a publisher behind it and all of that, with the exact same price that you have. And then go to SteamDB, enter in that game, and just copy their prices basically. Copy their regionalized pricing because they'll probably, if you go for like a really big studio, they'll put like the publisher will put the effort into correctly regionalizing, keeping in mind the inflation and like researching it. Just copy the numbers and move on. You can spend so much time on regionalizing it, but it's not really gonna be worth spending that much time on. Just go with what someone else has done. So this is just like a quick introduction to how I would price my game. Of course, there's plenty of other variables, but this is generally some ballpark things of, hey, go between like at least two, but ideally go for at least $5 if I'm speaking from personal experience to 20. Try not to go for 20 immediately, but it's better to overprice it slightly than to underprice it because you can just discount more or discount a little bit deeper. Whereas raising the price post launch is it's suicide. You can't really do that as a studio. You're gonna get so much crap for it. And generally it's just not done. If you're still uncertain about like the exact situation you're in and the exact pricing, I would like to take a moment to talk about our sponsor, which is me. Or we have a tier on our Patreon, Patreon Pro, where I will sit down with you or you'll send me like your documentation or like a build or whatever. And I will go through it and use all of the experience that I've built up basically to help you what is an optimal price, when should you launch your game, things like that. Because I've been through the trenches already. We've made plenty of mistakes with Forge Industry. And I wanna make sure that you don't make them as well because it has cost us a lot of time and a lot of money that we could have avoided. So if you're interested in that, there's a link to our Patreon down below. We also provide a lot of other content there where we go really deep into the financials of our studio, how we manage our business as a whole, and we give you daily updates as well on what is going on in the studio. So if that's something you're interested in, link down below. So I hope this kind of gives you some more pointers. If you're new here, we're game developers. We've made our own game, as I said, where we struggled with pricing. And now we make these videos where we talk about the mistakes we made and just about our experience with game development in general. So if that's something that you're interested in, you can also subscribe to us because we make three videos every week where we go over these things, where we talk about our experiences and just help you in becoming a better game developer. That's all I really have to say. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.